show is sponsored by Hive Mind CRM. It is more than just a CRM. It is a real estate and business mastermind that comes with an all-in-one CRM. You can have unlimited websites and users. You can call, text, RVM, and email all in one user interface. And you can set up custom automations for any type and multiple businesses. 65% of companies start using a CRM system within the first five years of business. Once implemented, the hive mind will save you on marketing, give you more time, and make more money. One of our users had his first $100,000 month using our system in June. We want to see you automate and accelerate your business. Text us at 210-972-1842 for future meetings and of course to get our $1 course on how to make more than six figures on one land deal. You can schedule your free demo today at hivemindcrm.io. Hey, what's up, people out there in real estate land? This is Anthony with The Hive Mind. This is another episode of The Hive With Us podcast. Today, we have an amazing, amazing guest. Uh, I think as, as these, these shows continue to go on, the guests just keep on getting more and more intense and amazing. So I'm excited about today's. We, we It took us a little while to get this gentleman on the show, but I'm sure he has lots to share. I think where our real estate career and our business career is headed, you're going to eventually need to learn what this gentleman knows along the way and something that he's taken a big part in. So, yeah, I want to introduce everybody to Mr. Tim Mai. Yeah. Well, hey, everybody. Hey, Anthony. Awesome, man. Yeah. Thank you for being on here, man. And uh, one thing I wanted to do is uh, tell you thank you, too, for always being there whenever I, I would have you look at stuff and ask for some advice. You were always there to, to provide support, man. So that means a lot. A lot of people, they make themselves unavailable on purpose, which I can respect. But, uh, yeah, you, you've done a lot for us, and I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. You're welcome. Always, you know, always glad to help an, a fellow investor, right, in the industry. You know, we learn from each other. I know I learned a ton from you as well. And so I, I love, I always love sharing ideas and I learn from each other and we both grow. Yeah, man. I love the energy and I appreciate it. Yeah. So I kind of spoke offline, but you've been doing this for 20 years. Yep. Yeah. So I, uh, I got started in 2002 after I got laid off from my IT job you know, back, back during the dot-com days. And yeah, since then I've done all kinds of deals. You know, I've done a lot of uh, wholesale, a lot of fix and flipping. When the market crashed back in 2008, I had 30 uh, rehabs going on at different stages of that rehab. So I got hit pretty hard during, during the last market crash. And, uh, but yeah, you know, just, just like a lot of entrepreneurs, we bounce back from that. We learn from that. We grow from that. Yeah. I've, uh, I've been blessed. Uh, I've probably done well over a thousand deals now, uh, you know, throughout the years in the last, I would say three years, I was when I transitioned over to the land side of the business. So I'm not doing any more, uh, fix and flip. I'm completely out of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, we do a lot of, we do a lot of land, land flips, land investing, land entitlements. So we are in uh, Houston Metro, and then we recently expanded into the, uh, Dallas and some Austin area as well. Well, welcome to the dark side, man. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Land side. <laughs> <laughs> so dude, why don't we start right there real quick? Why did you stop doing like cash flowing assets like houses, right? Because yeah. cash flow. So what would possess you to get in the land? Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it was ac- completely accidental. What happened was I was um, at that time, I was uh, buying a, a house and then doing an addition, turn into a duplex. And then and then the the remodeling for those, the construct they're pretty hefty. I'm like, okay, if I'm gonna do this much. I'm going to spend, you know, over a hundred thousand uh, dollars just to remodel and do the additions. I should look into building new. So I ended up buying, I bought a house that has three lots next to it. I bought another house that has uh, two lots next to it. And then while I was, you know, remodeling the houses to, you know, to do, to turn them into duplexes, uh, COVID came and, you know, the whole construction business got slowed down a lot during that time. And I was like, okay, I'm sitting on these lots. You know, I, l- let me see if I can sell these lots and, and, and you know, get some, get some cash flow. So I ended up selling the lots. Long story short, after I finished the house and everything, I made more money on those lots than I did on the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, like, I'm like, wait a minute. I don't have to deal with, like, evicting tenants. You know, city permits, all of that stuff. All I did was just resell those lots. I'm like, okay, you know what? I should, I should get into lots. And then I got on one of John Alexander's call and like 
on the, the first five minutes or so, he said that, you know, one of the best lists uh, when it comes to land is out-of-state owners. I was like, okay, that's all I needed to know. So mm -hmm. I got off, the, you know, I, get, I got off the, the call, uh, pulled an out-of-state owner list, and boom, you know, we did, gosh, the first year in land, yeah, we, we did probably over $700,000 with, with that strategy. So I'm like, this is no brainer. <laughs> yeah. God, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy to hear because you're not the first person to say that. Like, I was doing houses, doing houses, and then I actually fell into land and made more money than all the houses. So you're not the first person to tell us that. So it's kind of funny to hear. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, 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 and I mean, even, you know, when I, when I sold those lots at that time, like, looking back now, it's like, I mean, I should have, you know, sell them for a lot more than I did. So even at the price I did sell them at, you know, and make good money on them, they were they were still under market because at that time I didn't know, you know, what all to do yet. But, but yeah, you know, it's good. Yeah, we talked about that yesterday on a podcast that you can't you can't count the dollars looking backwards. And we, <laughs> and we look at everything we missed out on. Like, dang, if I know what I know now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shout out to John Alexander. He's hanging out with us right now. Boom. Yeah, man. John's paving the way for a lot of people to get into the land game, man. The land mogul on Instagram. Yeah. You know, I've followed John for a long time, even with his uh, lease purchase stuff uh, back in the old days. So, yeah. So, John, John's been a long, long time mentor of mine. Sure. Yeah. We met him on Clubhouse about roughly almost two years ago. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, he's, he's done a lot for us and he's put a lot of knowledge on the table and yeah, he's always helping people. He's helped yep. a lot of Hive Mind people get a get deals. And he's been with Hive Mind since the beginning. Yeah, so we love John. He's an icon. Yeah. Cool, yes. Yeah. So uh, let's. I want to. I don't know if you want to talk about this later. If you want to go a little bit into to what you're doing now in land, how your operate, how your operations are running. I want to talk to you about capital raising at some point because we're getting to the point to where if we had a little bit of excess capital laying around, we could make some miracles right now. So right. Yeah, we definitely can talk about that. So you know, in my business model, we, we acquire a lot of these land. Sometimes we use our own money, but a lot of times we use private money to actually close on them. And then, you know, we would list them on the MLS. We're able to get more dollars out of it that way. And, you know, we, we, we're not really a rush to sell, right? Because we already, we already close on it. Uh, and so that gives us time. That gives us more ability to negotiate with buyers. And, uh, and yeah, in terms of, you know, uh, raising money, you know, especially, you know, depending on the size of the deal, but typically... If it's a million dollars or less, finding private lenders to fund a deal like that is fairly easy. You know, if you ever done, if you know, and the people listening, I mean, if you ever done fix and flips, you're familiar with that hard money lending type industry, right? Type business. And so a lot of those private lenders, they're used to lending on houses. They're not that used to lending on land. But if you've done some some deals with them and they trust you, they'll, you know, they'll go wherever you you want to go. I mean, you know, they have that level of trust. So that's what I did. I started talking to uh, my private lenders from all the all the land, all the house flips I, I, I've done, and uh, told them, "Hey, I'm getting into land now. You know, we have different types. Uh, that we have the infill lots, which are very easy to do. They we comp them just like the way we do houses. So the loan on them is very straightforward, nothing much. Uh, and then some of the lands that we do, that's a little bit more rural, harder to comp." But I can certainly just start you with the easy ones, so that way you get familiar with it. And then when we get a bigger deal uh, that that is not a, as easy to come, at least now you know how the business works. And so, so I have those kind of conversations with them. Some, you know, some say yes, some says no. It's not a big deal. You just having a conversation with more people. Uh, if you don't have any private lenders, you certainly can talk to some hard money lenders. Some will do that. Hard money lenders tend to be more expensive, a little bit less flexible. But, you know, some of them have a lot of money, so they certainly can do it. They'll, um, you know, some, every hard money lender is a little bit different, but they'll want to see your credit. They'll want to see that you have some money in the bank account for reserves. And yeah, I was just, a friend of mine um, has a 55 acres in Nacogdoches, and uh, he's looking to buy it and subdivide it into five 11, 11 acre lots. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he asked me, hey, Tim, do you know anybody you know, that, uh, that, that would, that would, you know, loan on this. So that way I can buy it and, and do the, you know, do the subdivide. And I hook them up with a hard money lender and yeah, I mean, they, they're willing to lend on it, you know? And so, so yeah, those, you know, those lenders definitely exist, but I would say private lenders is the, uh, probably the, among the easiest, especially for a lot of the land deals. Now if you're doing bigger deals where you're going to do development and stuff, 
the kind of capital raising I, I do these days are syndications for commercial real estate apartment buildings. Typically, you know, they're, they're 10 million plus type properties. And so you are having to raise a lot more money. So you pull instead of, you know, one person, let's say one person gives you a hundred thousand, you might have, you know, 10 people or a hundred people each give you a hundred thousand. Um, that's what a syndication does. And so, yeah, you don't really need to worry about syndications until you do much bigger deals. Like I have a couple of deals right now that I'm looking to do land development on. So I've uh, closed them with private lenders uh, when I bought them. And I'm going through the process right now to get them rezoned, you know, getting bids for civil engineers and, 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 and all of that stuff that we need to do to then one of them I'm doing a uh, mixed use. So commercial rural, commercial in the front, multifamily in the back. Another one that's going to be a built to rent subdivision, probably around 100, 100 lots uh, or so there. So, so in a case like that, I am using private money to buy it. I'm using my own money to, um, to get it to entitlement um, uh, phase. Entitlement is basically where you get you know, the rezone and all of the approval in place. And then once that is done, then I'm doing a syndication to raise money to then do the actual development. So as you can see, there's different stages of how you can um, you, know, you can fundraise for these deals. Man, that's amazing, dude. So I've never put together syndication, but that's so funny that you said that because I've never heard you say it before. But I was going to text you just a couple of days ago. I was like, oh, I got to call this guy. I was going to ask you if you can do that and how that works. So. Um, yeah. it's, is it is it pretty simple to go into a little bit of it of how putting that together or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, obviously it's not something that you can do the document on your own, right? So you yeah. do have to hire an SEC attorney to do it. Costs about $15,000 to do the document. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, so um, it's called a private placement memorandum. And um, basic, yeah, basically it's a document. It's like a hundred page documents that explain you know, um, who's going to get paid what, who are all part of the transaction. Uh, so it, it spells out all the legal ease, right? Because it's uh, syndication is similar to selling a security. Uh, like, a, let's say if you have a company, like a public company, for example, and they raise a bunch of money from the public. And so they're selling securities. They're, they're, um, and so that's what, basically, that's what syndication is. Syndication is just like a much smaller transaction than a, you know, taking a company public, but it, the process is very similar. Mm -hmm. And so syndications different from private money is this, uh, with a private, you know, hard money, private money, that's a loan. So someone's loaning you money for you to buy, for you to buy that, uh, that property and you're paying them an interest, you know, uh, on, on that money. A syndication, is they are investing your company. So, you know, they get shares of your company uh, basically. And so it's not a loan. So they get equity, you know, whatever the equity split is. Um, it's very common that people will do either an 80-20 split. What that means is the money partners get 80% of the deal. The general partner who's running the deal gets 20% of the deal. You know, uh, there's other fees that, are, that the general partner can charge uh, in that. But that's a, that's a, that's a common structure they are more complicated structure, like someone would do, say, a um, you know, a prep of um, a preferred interest of let's just say six percent plus. They're gonna get you know fifty percent of the deal on the back end, so they get a little bit of interest and they get equity position. So there's there's a lot of ways to structure a syndication, but those are some of the common ways that people do it. And yeah, it's just, you know, in terms of the actual, but you know, outside of the document itself, raising money from the, the people is very similar. You, you know, it's just that you don't have one private lender to deal with, right? You have however many, you know, depending on the deal, like I said, let's say you're trying to raise a million dollars. You know, if you, if you have a private lender that loan you that whole million dollars, you only have one person to deal with. But in a syndication, most likely, you know, each person's going to invest 100000 with you. And so now you have 10 people that you have to work with. But it's scalable. It allows you, you know, when, when people, a million dollars, not a big deal. But when you're doing $10 million deal, $100 million deals, then you need that scalability that a private lender, it's very hard to find a private lender that will write a check for $10 million or $100 million unless they're big institutional players. 
but uh, but no, yeah, no, normal private lenders are probably gonna, not going to find that. So you do have to pull, you know, a bunch of people together to invest into your deal, you know, for you to for you to do the deal. Yeah, man. So we're going to have to have that conversation and continue that conversation, I guess, another day when we're not on, on the show. But I know I, I sent uh, Tim one that was 80 million. He's like, yeah, send me the paperwork. I'm going to take a look at it. Might have somebody. <laughs> 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 he wants to play that game. All right, let's try it. Let's see what happens. That's crazy, yeah. man. Yeah, I'm excited about that. It just dawned yeah. on me. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, you, I mean, you, you, you know, I know you, you're jokingly about it, but you'd be so surprised this is how it works. You're like, when when we're playing with houses, we're playing with tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands, right? Mm-hmm. And 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 for us, like, oh, that's normal. Like we speak that l- language, right? But let's say for I have a I have my son who's 18 years old that I'm training in the business. He did his first uh, land flip actually in uh, in Fifth Worth here in, in Houston. Nice. But um, uh, you know, for 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 someone like him, for example, right? when you're talking a hundred thousand, a million, like for him, that number could be really big, yeah. but right. Um, and, and so it works the same thing for us because we're so used to dealing in the hundred thousand dollar range, you know, with when talking about tens of millions, a hundred millions, it seems so really big, but once you start getting into that space and you get to meet the players that play in that space, it's like, Oh, it's nothing. It's just, it's just another connection that we you gotta find that plays in that air, that that space. So, you know, I say that to say, like, if you guys run across big deals, like, you don't have to get scared about it. Just know that there are someone out there doing those big deals, and all you need is just that connection to get a hold of that someone, and it becomes a normal deal for you. So, yeah. awesome, man. Yeah, thanks. That's worth the wisdom. So that's kind of where we're headed next. We're looking at some deals right now: thirty-three million, eighty million, twenty million. And even though we haven't completed that kind of transaction, I keep saying the same thing. It's like, I'm just glad to like sit at those tables and have those conversations and be on, you know, Zoom with those people like yourself. So exciting, man. Exciting. I'm going to keep sending yeah. you like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You spot a winner. <laughs> <laughs> so um, as far as um, when you're raising private capital, are you looking for, you have to find accredited investors always? And what's the, what's the, What's the strategy how that works? Because a lot of people might not understand that space. Yeah. So so if you're talking about so private capital, there's two different kinds, right? So when I'm saying private money, uh, just to give some distinction here. So if I'm referring to private money, I'm referring to a private lender similar to a hard money lender that lands on fix and flip. Okay. So those people, uh, no, they don't have to be uh, accredited investors at all. They're just one lend. You know, they're just one person. They are not buying a security in your company. They're, they're loaning the money to you. So the law is a lot, um, a, a lot easier on those type of deals. And so uh, that could be anything. That could be anyone. My, my very first private lender when I first started out was my sister. You know, she, I, I knew that she had some money sitting in a, a CD. In case you guys don't know what a CD is. Yeah, they're not very popular these days anymore, but they used to be a lot more popular certificate of deposit that banks give out. They pay very little. I think at that time she was earning about 1% you know, it, it interest on her money. And I was like, well, you have this money in the CD. It's only getting you 1%. I can give you at least three times that. So I give you 3%. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's a private, you know, that, that's an example of a, a private you know, a lender, right? And then when you get over to the syndication side, um, there are different types of syndication. There are getting into legal ease here but you guys don't don't you know don't worry too much about it but there's a regulation d 506 b that will allow up to 35 non-accredited investors and, and so the the only thing about the 506 b is that you can't add you can't publicly advertise that deal and uh so it has to be people that you have personal relationships with um and um you know the SEC goes into all of like how many touches you have and stuff that goes beyond this call. But the point being is that, you know, if you're, if you, if you want to raise money from non-accredited investors, five or six B, you have to have relationships with them already. Like your, you know, friends, family, um, you can talk to them about that deal and there's no minimum. You, you, you be like, hey, grandma, can I borrow a million dollars, $2 million? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> of course. <laughs> you have the deal, we have the money. That's how it hang works. On, hang on, Miho, I'll write you a check right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, yeah, so so in a 506B, you know, there's no minimum. Like, they, you, you can do as low as you want, but you don't want it too low because then you, you would need a lot more people that you need to raise money from, right? So let's say you're trying to raise a million dollars. If each person invests 100,000, that's only 10 people you have to deal with. If each person invests 10,000, that's 100 people you have to deal with, right? So do they um, all get so, so in the deal? Everybody that puts in money, or are they like silent partners, or are they active? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they, they, they're silent partners. They're called uh, limited partners, which is completely silent. They don't have voting rights or anything like that. And so, so yeah, so that's a 506B. 506C, that's for accredited investors only. So what that means is basically they have roughly about a million dollars net worth. And you can advertise that type of investment publicly. You don't have to have prior relationship with them. So if you see any ads on Facebook that's raising money, typically that's a 506C and they're raising money from accredited investors. Powerful information. Appreciate the yeah. clarification too. Because nice. like I said, there's, like I said, I, I know a little bit, but not a lot. And I, that even helped me a little bit. So I appreciate that. Yeah, you're welcome. So um, if anybody wants to partner with you, do they just send, like, send you a deal directly? Do you have somewhere they can send it to? They say, hey, I have some land. I think you should take a look at this. Yeah, they, I mean, they can certainly hit me up directly. I'm pretty active on Messenger, especially. Pretty, yeah, a- active on Facebook. And so, yeah, so, certainly um, send it. And then, um, you know, the way it works is that if it's a normal kind of deal that my team are used to, I'll pass it over to my team. They all handle all of that. But if it's a more... You know, if it's a bigger deal, more complicated deal, uh, then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll personally dig deeper into those type of deals. Okay, awesome, man. Yeah, I'm really excited about the the fundraising aspect of putting some of these bigger deals together because, like, it kind of goes beyond where seller finance is, isn't going to work anymore, and uh, yep. available capital on hand, even if you liquidated everything you had, isn't going to work anymore. So, yeah, you need to get some other people involved in some of these. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Especially if you're going to get into like bigger subdivides, right? If you're going to buy, you know, a hundred acres or a few hundred acres and you're going to subdivide, you know, those, those bigger deals. Uh, generally speaking, I think that, I mean, there's no, like, technically there's no size limit, but it's rare that, that I see someone that does a syndication for a deal that less than five, less than $5 million. It's because, you know, like I said, the document costs you 15 grand to create. So, it's just for the document. And so there's, there's costs involved in doing syndications. And so typically people do it on bigger deals. And then if it's smaller deals, they'll either use private money or they'll, they'll do joint ventures. So they'll bring on a money partner, uh, maybe one, two, three partners that come on, pull money together. So that's more common on smaller deals. Uh, but yeah, when, when, you, when you're ready to do the, the much bigger deals, syndication is a, is a very common way of doing it and um, the law got easier uh, since about uh, 10 years ago and so that's why now you see it's such a common place that of people doing syndications now yeah i got a bunch of deals in my, my brain cycling through right now i'm like we need to look at this one we need to look at this one <laughs> it just opens up so many more doors it does it does for sure yeah so now it's like now i'm not afraid of you know i'm not afraid of looking at bigger deals I know you, you guys know, but I've been interviewing a lot of guys on my own show. Uh, a lot of guys I've, I've interviewed, they've raised over $100 million. What that means is typically they've done over $500 million in business. And, and yeah, the deal size that they're talking about, it's like it's huge. It blows my mind away. <laughs> and uh, and it's, 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 they talk about like it's nothing. It's like it's just another zero <laughs> and you raise more money for more people and that's it. What, what are you learning? Like, what's the main, t- what are the main takeaways you're learning from interviewing people like that? Cause I, I've seen you interviewing some whales on there. Yeah. 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 You know, my, I would say the biggest takeaway is just, it's just, it's really, it's just another number. Like it's just another zero. Like we, you know, it, yeah. Like we tend and uh, me personally, shoot, I've been real estate for 20 years now, most of which has been in single family home space. And the reason is because for the longest time, I just said to myself, like, oh, these apartment deals, these bigger deal, uh, commercial deals, they're too difficult. They're too big. You know, I'm comfortable with these little houses that I know what to do. I can do it with my eyes closed. And so 
you know, like I have this this you know limiting belief that I can't do these big deals. They they they're more complicated. Well, the the truth is now that I'm in it, it's you know it, it's it's so far from the truth of the way I used to look at it. With these big deals, it's almost never that you find one person doing this whole big deal all by themselves. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't exist. So it's a very in the in this you know bigger deal space. It's a very teamwork, you know. So you have, you you generally have several people that come together, and they might be business partners in a specific business, or it could be like you have your own business, I have my own business, but you know we found a deal and we come in and do the deals together. And then let's say you handle all the acquisition, I'm gonna handle all the capital raising, you know, and then Daniel's gonna handle all the development, you know, like so it's it's a very teamwork type of environment. Yeah. And and that's the reason why it's not a big big thing to do these big deals is because you're not by yourself. You're not trying to do it all your own. You have a whole team that's going to come together. And some of these deals where, uh, let's say, you know, uh, I see a syndicator needs to raise a hundred million dollars on just one deal, using that as an example. What happens is that is the 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 person who who might be in charge of that deal. They're not the only person raising money for that deal. There might be ten or even twenty entities behind that that's all coming together to raise money for this big, you know, uh, b- big deal. And so, so it's all it's all about teamwork. It's not about like individual work. Even if you know, even if all you can raise is a million bucks, so let's use that as an example. Let's say it's like okay, you know, if you can exhaust all of your whole network, you can raise a million bucks. But because you can raise a million dollars, you can be in with one of the you know twenty, fifty guys that's gonna raise that whole hundred million dollars. And so yeah, so it's um it, you know the business is very built on teamwork, which makes everything so so much easier. You don't have to be an expert of anything. Uh, very different from the single family home space where you kind of have to be an expert of everything because mm-hmm. uh, the deal is so small. There's not enough profit to go around. For you to have that many partnerships and for you to have super smart, smart partners, but in these bigger deals, you know there's a lot more money to go around, and so you attract the top players uh, that comes in and partner together to to take these deals down. Well, what's crazy about that is that a lot of people like they want to keep their business small and wear every hat, and like I can do it the best out of any anybody I want. And the crazy part about it is the bigger you get, the easier it becomes because you can always outsource and ha- find the right people to help you yep. do what you need to do. Yeah, so exactly. The term of scalability, the larger you get. So yep. everybody out there thinking small, you need to think bigger. Yep, 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 yeah. And I think you're the one that helped push that button in my brain, Tim, is I called you one day and I was t- talking to you about some of the deals I was doing and we're just kind of just sharing back and forth. It's like, yeah, I'm working on one right now that's 60 million. And I was like, then why am I working on these little ones? <laughs> <laughs> so it's cool to, I think that's probably something that I've enjoyed the most, even more than like the dollars and cents about these deals is the people that you meet, the connection. Yeah. You said the quality of people, like the ideas that they have, just personality types. It's like people are very laid back, very calm, right? Because there's a, I guess every, things are, are have the potential to go very well if you can stay level-headed, stay helpful, stay humble. And that's yeah. what I'm realizing is that sitting at these tables, hopping on these phone calls, hopping on these Zooms, these people are, are the people that you'd want to be around anyway. Super helpful, super humble, super connected. And uh, I think that's cool, man. That's, that's something that I've been enjoying more than anything else is the relationships that we're making. Yeah, yeah, me too, for sure. And I, that's, yeah, for some reason, the, the this industry, and for the lack of a better term, I'm calling it, you know, the big deal industry. <laughs> that, like- that can, yeah, that can include land, it can include apartment, commercial real estate. But I, I found that most people in this industry are very collaborative type um, you know, like that's just the way they run business. I think it's the industry kind of forced them to think that way, and so yeah, it's 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 been phenomenal. I love the people that uh that you know that that I've been interact with, you know, meeting with, like like you mentioned, uh, and yeah, the people I've been interviewing. I mean, gosh, I, they they blow my mind away all the time. <laughs> um, yeah. So, can you talk about the capital raising summit? What is that, and uh, who, who do you want, who, who's your general people that you want to come? Yeah, so uh, so basically, it's a it's about how to raise capital for big deals. 
a lot of、uh, people who are coming are syndicators. They're raising money for apartments, you know, commercial real estate, land development. We also have some fund managers that are coming as well. One of the family office, and that's a whole new different level of、uh, of individuals.、Uh, family office.、Uh, the gentleman I'm talking to, to later on today, he's coming. His company, his family office. So family office is basically when you are an ultra wealthy family, you 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 pull money together as a family, and then you hire a、um, like a financial advisor to help. Your family invest that money, okay? So you you see that a lot with you know like like the Rockefeller family, they probably have the biggest family office, you know. And and so, anyways, one gentleman that's coming and he runs a family office. They they've done over fifteen billion dollars worth of real estate. <laughs> crazy, <laughs> yeah.、Uh, so <laughs> crazy numbers like that. And、uh, and yeah, so he's coming, and you know, and so so yeah, so it, a lot of people that are there are in the commercial real estate space, people that need to raise a lot of money. So yeah, so if you guys you know want to learn how to raise a lot of money, come.、Uh, it is a more、uh, it is a more advanced crowd. So if you're looking like how to get started in real estate. It, you know, it, a lot of that's going to go over your head because it's 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 a more complicated、uh, topic. But、uh, but yeah, if you're already in real estate. And you want to learn how to raise money?、Uh, it's definitely a room to be in. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, that's one. That's one thing. There's always there's always different types of, and that's why I really wanted to ask that quick direct question because if you're new, don't go there. Gonna, you're gonna miss. Yeah, it's not gonna really <laughs> stick. But it's more for advanced people that are already wanting to get in that space, already in that space, that you can network and meet other people. Exactly.、Space. Yeah. Yeah, the network's gonna be crazy. <laughs> like, yeah, the, the the caliber in the room is just. Insane, insane. I was gonna say,、uh, what is the quote that is yours or somebody else's that you resonate with? I okay. I I just heard this quote this morning. Actually,、uh, I was listening to、um, Marianne Williamson, who she's a teacher of A Course in Miracles, and she said this: "Worry is praying for bad things to happen." And you know, because as entrepreneurs, I don't know about you guys, but I get anxiety all the time. Yes. And so I'm like constantly having to meditate and listen to these, you know, to help me. But, but w- when I heard that, it's like that. I mean, it makes so much sense, right? Because what is a worry? A worry is is you know us thinking about something that hasn't happened yet, that's out there in the future, and we're thinking negatively about it. So it's like it is, you know, it is like you know, dreaming about something bad's going to happen, and so. So yeah, that that was a really good quote. Not anything has to do with business, but if you if you if you're like me, if you're a warrior, if you get anxiety, keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, man. If you're not growing and stretching and pushing yourself, then、uh, then you have no stress, you have no worry. But if you're always pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone, yeah, you're gonna have it. I'll tell you something that、uh, helped me a lot was getting rid of caffeine because I was just going through cups and cups of coffee, not thinking about it, feeling great, plenty、yeah. of energy, but I was like. Why in the hell am I worried like so often? Like, what is it?、And、so once I eliminated the caffeine completely, I, I feel like at least fifty percent, seventy-five percent of it went away. And then I added CrossFit, and that's helping too. So <laughs> that's awesome.、Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I I agree with you. I mean, you know, coffee does different things for different people, but yeah, it does give me anxiety attacks. <laughs> <laughs> yes,、yeah, yeah, some, so. some days I drink for like a million bucks, and then some days I drink it, and I just start. <laughs> About I start highlighting all the little negative things that are going on and like man why did I do it what did I, I should have did this and like why am I、yeah. thinking about this who cares <laughs> yeah I identified the problem and got rid of it so that's、yeah. cool. I love that quote and I do really I need I need to reread the A Course in Miracles it's probably been fifteen years since I picked that book up yeah good good stuff yeah can you recommend a, a business book that can you recommend a business book in general that you like a business book that I like. I mean, it, you know, it, it what you know depends, you know, on on on、uh, if you're looking for mindset stuff or more tactical stuff. But I love I love book that has around to do with mindset. I know you know, rich dad poor dad made a big difference for me. It shifted my mind a lot when when I first started as an entrepreneur. I like books like、uh, Mini Habits, Atomic Habits.、Uh, you know, talk about like little little habits that you do. I like books that are Miracle Morning is really good too. I I I go through different phases in my journey where okay, 
I'll take, you know, I'll take one discipline or one practice. I'll go all in with that practice, you know, whether that's meditation or that's journaling or, so I'll, I'll do, I'll, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I don't, and plus probably has to do with my personality type too. I, I find myself, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do something for a few months and then I'll go and try something new for another few months and I'll, I'll do it in, in, in stages like that. Versus I know some people, they have the same routine that they do every single day, right? Like they're going to, you know, meditate, journal, read, like every single day, they do it that way. My personality just doesn't work that way. And so I have to change it around. Uh, I went through a period of time where I even shaved my head. I'm like, I just need to do something different. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, you know, Anthony, you're talking, you know, you're talking about like, you know, CrossFit, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Gosh, like men- mental health is a real thing. Mental illness is a real thing, right? And so as entrepreneurs, we, because the, you know, because of how much we have to do and the amount of, like, even here at my my office, right, I have so many staff I have to take care of and their families. And in the Philippines, I have tons of VAs, so I have tons of family I have to take care of. And so, 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 yeah, like, we deal with a different level of stress than normal people do it. And so we do have to uh, stay on top of uh, all the mental health that we could possibly equip ourselves with, right? Whether that's, you know, meditation or, or, or these mindset books or uh, CrossFit exercise, you know, those are all good. So I, I mean, they're not exactly business, but they do more good for your business than any, any tactical <laughs> stuff you can do in your business. Yeah, dude, that's amazing, man. I, I said that recently. I said, you know, I'm a better business person when I'm going to CrossFit because I went several years ago for several years in a row. And I remember like how like invincible I felt and everything always went my way. Everything was easy, meeting, sales, super, super easy. And then I started to injure this shoulder. I didn't hurt it, but I, like I need to lay off of it. So I stopped going for a few years. And I was wondering, like, things are going amazing. But I was like, I feel like I'm better at business than this. Like, what's going on mm-hmm. here? And now I've been back for like five months and uh, man, dude, I feel amazing. I feel like I'm knocking down walls again. And it's like, it, it directly correlates with me like pushing myself. And it's like, I think it's all the extra oxygen in your body, sweating out all those toxins. But then also like you have time to think, putting myself first. Yeah. I'm at the gym every day at nine. First things first. I'm, nope, I have no meetings before noon at all. Zero. Like family and, and gym first. And then after that, then we'll go ahead and start knocking out the rest of the stuff for the day. And then I'm good to work till midnight. But yeah, you're right, man. If if you don't take care of your mental health, this business will it'll kick your butt. Yep, it sure will. <laughs> yeah, I, I see my kids and they're happy and they're smiling, they're loving life, the wife, everything. And then I'm just thinking, like, I wonder if they ever think about how hard I have it. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody knows our pain but us. <laughs> like that guy at this one that's carrying the globe, right? Carrying the whole world. Yep, yep, yep. And for them, everything's super cool and super easy and fun. And I'm over here like, dang. I gotta- <laughs> But across it just so my head doesn't explode. I was going to say that too about uh, about meditation. You know, I wake up in the morning and first things first is just pray and just go by myself and get away from everything. No music, no lights, no cell phone. And uh, I, I, I try to do it every day, but it's probably three days a week, right? But it, it right. helps tremendously. Yeah, it helps you calm the storm and put things into perspective. But I think between those two tools have probably been the most powerful tools that I found in business. And it's not even business related. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. And one, one of the things you mentioned, because I know some of us, we deal with uh, like wanting to consume a lot of information, right? Read a lot of books. I went through periods where I went, I went through an entire year without consuming any new content. So like wow. I wouldn't read books. I wouldn't watch YouTube videos. I would only self-generate content. So, Ooh. you know, I'll, yeah. And so it, it was pretty tough to go through mentally, but it, it, I mean, you're like, you, you're so much more creative than you give yourself to. All of us, all of us. I mean, the, the truth is that if, if we just run our business based on our tu- intuition, we'll do just fine without any outside information. Like, as for some reason, intuitively, we know what to do. We know what our business needs. But a lot of times, we don't trust ourselves enough. And so we're, we're trying to learn strategies and tactics from other people. But yeah, you know, if, if you're the type of person who consume a lot of content, it might be a good exercise for you to do the opposite, which is not consume any content and only self-generate content, you know, and almost like coaching yourself through it. So yeah, so during that time, I went on a lot of walks where I, uh, I just turn on my phone recorder and just talk. Like I'm just talking to myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that, that, was, that was really good, good exercise. 
dude, another another powerful tip, dude. That's so freaking amazing. I forgot about that. So I would do it for like I've never done a year, but I've done weeks and months at a time where no music, no YouTube, no nothing, no books, nothing at all. Yeah, just just me and myself. And yeah, you're right. I mean, some of your best inspirations come during those periods. It's like an information detox. Because yep, exactly. Yeah, you're trying to learn new things over and over and over again, and you get overload. And it's like even the new information is not even helpful anymore. Right. But I think for people yep. that are entrepreneurial that you're trying to push yourself to grow, push your business to grow, that's something that you're going to do. You're going to you're going to end up with an information overload. So you need to do an information detox. That's powerful. Yeah. That. Yeah. 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 Yeah, like you know, I I uh, earlier on uh, at the beginning of the show, I share my 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 what you know how I got started with land, right? Like I got on the call, I heard John share about one tip, just one tip. This is the list, and I got off the call. Like there was no more information, just implementation. Like that's a very important skill set you wanna you know, you, uh, especially if you're out there and you're you're you know, you're uh, having challenges doing your first deal or just having challenges doing deals at all. Uh, yeah. And, you know, stopping the information and, and, and focusing on implementation is super, super important. Beautiful, man, dude. I, I think we'll go ahead and wrap it up right here. This was an amazing show. Tons and tons of knowledge and gems. I'm going to have to listen to this one a few times. If you came in late, guys, as soon as this is over, go back to the beginning and press play. This was this was amazing. Yeah, I bet this one's going to get a ton of views. <laughs> Lots of information, lots of power in this conversation. We appreciate your time, uh, Tim. And uh, like I said, I, I look forward to everything that you do and like helping us out in the future. And we'll see, we'll see what damage we can do in the, uh, with the deals we have coming up. Awesome. Yeah, looking forward to it. Houston, uh, I should be in Houston next week, I think. So, uh, man, we'd love to sit down grab some lunch and, and talk a little bit, get some deals in front of you that we're working on and looking at right now, see if we can uh, spark some new ideas. Let's do it. Awesome, man. Thank you, dude. This was super fun. Super amazing. We appreciate you for coming on. All right. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, everyone. The show is sponsored by The List Guys. Do you need more leads in your local or virtual market? One in 10 small businesses don't invest in any kind of marketing. The List Guys have over 35 plus list types to choose from, and you can mix and match any list or criteria. We also use the skip trace list and provide up to seven numbers and email addresses. Every list you purchase will be scrubbed against previous purchases. The List Guys are here to save you time. Contact the List Guys today at www.1listguys.com. That's www.1listguys.com.